<clears throat> We're on the Montreal Valley's army. We're going to Argentine. And we'll really shake them up when we win the World Cup. Because Scotland are the greatest football team. I've heard it that the back of the is the best I've ever been. Since Pele think that's Pele's greatest that they have seen. There's Bobby Moore and Charlton, English favorite too. But Allies are. Love the boys in Scotland's blue. Eh, we are the Marge of Allies army. We're going to the Argentine. And we'll really shake them up when we win the World Cup. Got Scotland are the greatest football team. I just don't think they're really good. I just don't think they're good. What the fuck is going on? How many World Cups have they won? They haven't won a World Cup. And they haven't even been to the freaking knockout stages. So, bleep, 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 boo. We are yelling on Scotland. They ain't the greatest soccer team. And they really got shook up all the times of the World Cup. Because they've never been to the freaking knockout stage. It's the ages old question about crapping on a team. Is who's the worst World Cup team of all time? Well, it depends on your qualifications and your rhetoric. Well, we've seen teams go 0-3 in their early World Cup appearances. Yes, Canada has done that. Canada didn't even score a goal in their only World Cup appearance. But heck, China never did in 2002, so we tied with China. A goal for Canada against anybody, Belgium, Croatia, or Morocco, will make sure we get out of that mess. No country has ever had multiple World Cup appearances in history and had zero goals. Imagine how Canada feels, like being teased and all that. But hey, we'll score one or two goals, I'm sure of it. How about the worst team by losses? Well, it would be Mexico. Mexico has lost more lo games than any other country in World Cup history. But the funny thing is, unlike Scotland, which is, of course, the subject of this video, Mexico has been to the knockout stages. Granted, a couple times it was because they were the host team, and FIFA likes to help the host countries out by doing some argy-bargy and all that. But, I mean, Mexico beat Bulgaria in 1986. Negrete's spider goal, as they called it. Mexico even faced Americans a couple times in the knockout stages. So, like, and of course, lost to the famous, uh, I forgot the guy in 2006 who scored that famous, oh, I think Rodriguez with the famous volley in the 2006 second round against Argentina. Washington versus Mexico. But for my standards about the worst World Cup nation, you gotta handle Scotland. But you'd be saying, hey on, didn't Scotland win a few games every now and then? Yes, but do you know how many times they've been to a knockout phase in the World Cup? That's right, buddy. Zero. Zero point zero. I can make a lot of Scottish jokes of things, but I'm gonna hold back. I'll let the FIFA World Cup glorification speak for itself. So, you want to know about Scotland at the World Cup, huh? Well, I'll tell you about it. Our story begins in 1873 when they had the Scottish Football Association, the second oldest in the world behind England. And in 1873, they would face England in what was called the first official international match. Scotland had a chance. To qualify. In the 1930s, just like England, they were petulant. They didn't like broken time. They wanted broken time payments to players because, you know, break their training and go to this World Cup. Scotland came back in 1946 as a permanent member. So, Scotland were now eligible to enter the 1950 World Cup. And FIFA actually said that the home nations championship between England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, the top two countries would automatically qualify for the tournament in Brazil. All right, fine. However, the Scottish Football Association said that Scotland would only make it to Brazil if they won the competition. If they kept second, no way. And that's what happened. Scotland faltered in the final game to England on home turf, 1-0. So that meant England won and Scotland second. So all 
Scotland had to do was take second place and head over to Brazil. But nope. That wasn't good. The Scottish players even said we were making a big mistake to the SFA, the Scottish Football Association. But Scotland's like, hell no. You know, they didn't like it and all that. So they tried for 1954 World Cup, and the same thing happened. The home nations stopped too. Scotland took second again, but this time they weren't petulant like they were in 1950. They decided to go to Switzerland. The only problem was that Scotland, well, Scotland only sent 13 players to, to their team, even though FIFA allowed 22 players. Scotland decided to wear these atrocious blue sweaters, like buttoned-up sweaters, thinking, oh, Switzerland's going to be cold. Well, when you have a match at 90 Fahrenheit... You know that you've messed up. So anyway, Scotland lost to Austria 1-0. And then Scotland would play their second and final group game because in 1954 they had two seeded teams and the two unseeded teams. And the two seeded teams couldn't face each other and the two unseeded teams didn't face each other. So Scotland only had two games instead of three. Scotland took on Uruguay and got taken out 7-0. In fact... Tommy Dockery, famous manager who was part of the 1954 Scottish team, said that they were knackered during the national anthem. Also because they're wearing these stupid wool-like jerseys with the with the neck with the neck guard. I'm like, what the hell? With a turtleneck. <clears throat> well, Scotland came back to the World Cup in 1958. In fact, all four home nations, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and England, all qualified. So Scotland beat Spain in a qualifying group, so that got them to the World Cup. Matt Busby actually was going to be the manager of the Scottish team, which was great. The only problem was the injuries he suffered during the Munich air disaster, disaster that ruined Manchester United for many years. Although Busby was alive, he couldn't do it. So Dawson Walker had to take charge of the team. They tied Yugoslavia in the first game. Okay, fair enough. And, unfortunately, Scotland faltered to Paraguay 3-2, even though the Tommy Dockery was actually sent to watch Paraguay. And they said that Paraguay was a rough fit and good team. And the coach said that, you know, we need balance. France took care of Scotland, and Scotland went home. I didn't think Scotland was going to make it that far with France and Paraguay. And Yugoslavia. So Scotland then went to a dark period. No World Cups till 1974. In 62, they were close. They got to be first place in their qualification group, but it was a tie with the Czechs. Unfortunately, they lost in a neutral site, and the Czechs went on to not only make the World Cup based on that, they actually got to the final before Brazil beat them. Scotland was in qualification, but they needed... They needed to play Italy, and Scotland needed a win to qualify or a tie to force a playoff. Unfortunately, Scotland got their butts handed to them and didn't even come close. Italy would then falter to North Korea in that famous game. So Scotland was put in the qualification group in 1970. All Scotland had to do in qualification was not lose to West Germany. A tie would help and retained qualification. But shockingly, lost 3-2. to two. That saw West Germany and Austria qualify for the World Cup. Scotland was best. So, anyway. Scotland somehow, in some way, got to the World Cup in 1974. Not only that, England didn't even get there, thanks to Jan Tomaszewski, and I always mess up those names, for Poland, at Wembley, in the qualifying group. Yeah. Scotland would now have to deal with Three teams. First off was a 2 nothing victory over Sayre, which of course had their own problems because President Mugumbu, or Dictator Mugumbu, would, Mobutu, would get on Sayre's nerves. So they went 2-0. And then they took care of Brazil. Unfortunately, they could only tie Brazil and Yugoslavia. And it looked good. Unfortunately, one tiny little problem was that they actually fell out 
of qualifying for the knockout stages, or the second group stages, as they put it in 74. I was like, what? We didn't lose a game, and yet you're not going to get us through. Well, unfortunately, goal differential was the big thing. And since Brazil beat Sire 3-0, whereas Scotland won only 2-0, and Yugoslavia crushed Sire 9 zip Yugoslavia and Brazil got in. Scotland, out. That is one of the most bullshit ways to get out of the World Cup. And all that. And then 1978, they shockingly did it with Ali McLeod as manager. He looked good. Of course, Ali started an army performing on top of the pops. And Scotland thinking, because they were a top 10 team, they were going to crush it in the Argentine. Scotland took care of the Czechs and the, the Welsh on their way to qualify for the World Cup. Ali McLeod said, you know what? Scotland will come home with Argentina with a medal. And the fans were hoping and all that. There was actually respected, some respected coaches, including the Dutch coach, Renus Michels, said that Scotland could win the competition. Scotland's first game was against Peru, and they looked good because Peru seemed to not look good in 1970 in the World Cup. Unfortunately, Tavila Kubias put up two big goals, making it 3-1 for Peru. Oddly enough, in the Scottish net behind Alan Ruff was a present from Blue Peter. It was a cuddly mascot. And the mascot was in the net when that happened. Weird. Anyhow, so they lost to Peru. That, that was bad enough. However, the second game was terrible. Scotland could only tie with Iran. You heard that right. Scotland tied 1-1 with Iran. And this is 1978. This is not 2022. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> McLeod had some problems. He would pick inexperienced fullbacks and retaining two guys who didn't feel like they did anything. The Scottish fans were pissed. Obviously, I mean, you couldn't beat Peru and you couldn't beat Iran. You're in trouble. So Scotland was out of luck. They still had a chance. Because if they could beat the Dutch by three clear goals, or plus three, if you will, then Scotland would get into the World Cup on goal differential in the knockout stages, or the second group, if you will, and take down Peru. Well, Scotland won. That's the good news. Scotland did beat the Dutch, but only because the Dutch rested their best players. And let's not forget about Archie Gamble's second goal in that game, which was a fantasy goal that was like... Hard to believe he went all around the Dutch defense and scored, make it 3-1. to one. Scotland Nash needed to score a goal and have the Dutch not score. Sadly, though, the Dutch did score. The good news was that Scotland won, but only 3-2. So, goal differential, they were screwed, and Peru took their spot. Peru would then go on to tank against Argentina, giving Argentina the trip to the final in exchange for... Great, and the unfreezing of assets for Peruvian leaders. Isn't that just stupid? So, you know, you don't know what you got till it's gone. So, anyway, that was just pathetic. Scott, Scotland also had the problem because Willie Johnston, who was one of the best midfielders around, had to leave because of a failed drug test. Yick. So, Jock Stein who was a hero for Scottish soccer, especially for Celtic, winning the European Cup in 1967, was named the manager. So Scotland failed at Euro 80 to qualify. And then in 82, they were in a tough group of Sweden, Portugal, Israel, and Northern Ireland, only losing one match and qualifying, alongside Northern Ireland, who pulled off a stunner of their own at the 82 World Cup by beating Spain and denying Yugoslavia a chance in the second group. Unfortunately, Scotland would be in what they called the group of death. And I believe 1982 was the first time in history that soccer had what it's called the group of death. So, yeah, it was just unbelievable. A lot of group of death and all that. So, yeah, the group of death was huge. It's a cliche. 
It was actually popularized after 1986. But the group of death was actually not the first time in 82. 1970, group three held England, Brazil, the Czechs, and Romanians as the group of death. But this was only the second group of death in history. There would be a group of death involving Germany, but in 86, but anyway, they couldn't believe it. Well, the group of death with New Zealand, Brazil, and the Soviets. Now, a group of death would have all four teams looking pretty good, not just three. While New Zealand were making their debuts, Brazil was, well, Brazil, and the Soviets were underrated, if you will. Scotland crushed the Kiwis 5-2 to two in the first game, which was great. And then Brazil took Scotland to the sword with a pair of wonderful goals by Socrates and Seiko, make it 4-1. Scotland would take on the Soviets and tie the Soviets 2-2. Okay, fair enough, a try. But guess what? They did not get through. They actually missed out on goal differential. Yeah, Scotland blew that 2-1, a 2-1 lead when Alan Hansen and Willie Mailer, the defenders, collided chasing a ball, and then the Soviets ran and scored. That's one thing. But also the biggest problem for Scotland was the fact about New Zealand. You're thinking, they beat New Zealand. What difference does it make? Well, considering the goal differential, that would have helped them out against the Soviets. Brazil won the group. The Scot it was found out that if the Scots had shut out the Kiwis, 5-0 instead of 5-2, Scotland would have got through. So New Zealand, by scoring two goals against Scotland, actually screwed Scotland over. Which was like, what? It happened. Yikes. So, 82 was a, a stab in the heart. I mean, second time in three World Cup appearances, they actually faltered because of goal differential. In 78, they basically couldn't freaking beat Iran. But they did qualify for the 86 World Cup, unfortunately, under bad circumstances. They needed a point against Wales. They got the tie against Wales that got them to a qualifying two-leg event against Australia. They beat Australia. And it looked good. Unfortunately, when Scotland played Wales and had the tie that got them to the playoff against Australia, Jock Stein, the coach, suffered a heart attack and died shortly after. It was just shocking. Scotland beat Australia, and Alex Ferguson, yes, that Alex Ferguson, was the manager. The bad news for Scotland? Again, they get in a group of death with Uruguay, Denmark, and West Germany. Scotland had nothing. They couldn't beat Denmark, which was shocking because Denmark wasn't the team. I thought that Denmark wasn't the team that they were until 92. And then West Germany, well, it's West Germany, what do you expect? So Scotland needed to beat Uruguay to somehow maybe get one of the third place spots needed to get in. Because remember, there were six groups of four, top two teams in each group. That's 12. You need four extra teams without having to go to the stupid group format again. Unfortunately, Uruguay knew what to do and took down Gordon Strachan, getting Batista a red card for Uruguay in the first minute, one of the fastest, if not the fastest red card in World Cup history. It didn't help that Uruguay basically didn't play for the win. They played to screw Scotland over, and it worked. Scotland got tied, and Uruguay, despite being shellacked by Denmark in the group stages, had a worse goal differential then Canada and got in. Well, it also helped that Uruguay got points. Canada didn't. Anyway, so Scotland were in a deep spot. No no Fergie to be manager, so it was Andy Roxburgh. So they did qualify. They were actually second in the qualifying group behind Yugoslavia and ahead of France. Now, before you say anything, this was just, it was about a year before Yugoslavia got in trouble for their war crimes. So thus, you know, they were still there. Yeah, French. The French got taken out. So Scotland got a decent group with Costa Rica, Sweden, and Brazil. Brazil, they're probably going to get their asses handed them. But Costa Rica and Sweden, if they can pull off some decent results against those two teams, they'll be going to the group stages, to the knockout stages for the first time ever. But somehow, in some way, Scotland flubbed their opening game to Costa Rica of all teams. 1-0. Flashbacks of Iran, 1978, anybody? Or even Peru, 78? Wow. 
I feel so bad for Scotland. So bad. Well, the good news was Scotland did beat Sweden 2-1 and needed to avoid defeat against Brazil. A tie would have helped. They would have probably got one of the third place spots. But Brazil, in the 80th minute, scored a goal when Jim Layden, the goalie, fumbled the shot. And Brazil won 1-0. Game over. Scotland's out. Scotland could not qualify for the 94 World Cup. They were put in a bad group with Italy, Switzerland, and Portugal, among others. So Scotland couldn't make it through. But in 98, they survived. They were the best runners up in the UEFA qualifying. So they got one of the spots without having to go through a playoff. Scotland would deal with Brazil, Norway, and Morocco. This should be easy. Brazil? Okay. Scotland just hates against playing Brazil. How many groups have they have had to deal with Brazil? Well, 1974... 1982, 1990, and now 1998. Their fourth time having to do with Brazil in the group stages, mind you. Scotland actually tied the score 1-1. Unfortunately, an own goal led them to a 2-1 loss. Scotland would tie Norway. You tie Norway? Really? Really? And then they got butt whipped by Morocco 3 set in their final World Cup game up to this date. So they couldn't do it. Not even close. So anyway, Scotland were really flattened and all that. And they've had not a really good idea. All that. But they had a chance in 2018. They tied Slovenia. But unfortunately, that ruined their playoff position. Scotland got second place in Group F, the 2022 qualification. So Scotland got to play, be in a playoff against Ukraine. Well, you could feel the sentiment for Ukraine and all that. And it was at Hampton Park in Scotland. They should have won. But unfortunately, Scotland would falter 3-1. So Scotland, just this past year, actually had a golden chance to qualify for the World Cup, and you blew it again. I mean, Scotland's upset, especially with England and Wales qualifying for the 2022 World Cup. So Scotland weren't the best football team around, and now they keep on waiting for another FIFA World Cup a chance. The good news for Scotland is that there will be 48 teams fighting it out in 2026 at the next World Cup, held jointly by Canada, U.S., and Mexico. The bad news is they still have a chance to not make the knockout stages. Unbelievable how Mexico has more World Cup losses, and yet Scotland can't even get out of their group to the knockout stages, even if they tried. I mean, when you, ana when you have your analysis, 1974, they got... Taken out because they couldn't score enough goals against Zaire. 1978, they couldn't beat Peru or Iran. 1982, they couldn't shut out New Zealand when they needed to. 1986, they couldn't take care of the manimal, animals of Uruguay. 1990, they lose to freaking Costa Rica. And 1998, they freaking tie Norway. Scotland just has the worst luck when it comes to Facing countries they should handily beat. Ali's target army, my ass. So thank you for watching this video. There will be three more coming up in this current series. I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.